Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is uh, Joshua Taylor, Donald E. Taylor, coming to you from here in uh, the place that the Lord has <coughs> blessed me in Boston Bar. And uh, I want to bring you a simple message in Psalms 133 this morning. And, and uh, you know, Psalms is, I would say, one of my favorite books, you know, outside of Revelations. You know, love love the both the major and minor prophets, but the Psalms have has, have a special place in my heart because it, it, it's made my heart come alive. And, and you can't read through the Psalms without weeping, without going into trivial. Not if your heart, you know, if your heart's been opened, it, it touches you, you know, it's, and it does what it did this morning, and, and, uh, you know, yesterday I, one of the few days that, that, uh, I got so busy working here, and company visiting that, that I, I missed out on the word yesterday, and, and this morning I just, I just longed for it, I just, had to get the word in my heart and uh, going to town today so I need to make sure that I got my armor on especially in the days and like David Terrell God's prophet to the world said that we have to learn to learn to pray in our in our goings in our comings right and uh, you African brothers and sisters you probably heard about uh, David Terrell and uh, he's been spending the last number of years or so going to your country and you know he has the revelation of the Lord he walks in that anointing and, and there's one time you know that Elijah came to him and, and uh, yeah, you know what he said Elijah you know Elijah is one and he's talking about the spirit and, and the power of Elijah right that, that's coming and that <clears throat> In this last generation of time, he's been the number one ministry on the earth. You know, a, a real hard, hardcore man of God who uh, had thousands of hours of visitations over his life, and he, he's still going strong. And he's in his, in his 80s, and uh, he, he saw a time that America was occupied. He saw a time that the bombs fell on America. And, People, even people in his own congregation, congregation found out where he was, <clears throat> and says, "Brother Terrell, save us!" He says, "Well, it's too late. It's too late, because you haven't pressed in. You know, you haven't pressed in to uh, make make the Lord your your rock and your salvation. And you, you, you know, you can have the hidden manna given to you for over the years and." But yet, it comes down to an individual basis. Are we making Yeshua, our King, first and foremost in our life? And this is what this passage is talking about. It's so precious. And, you know, there's a... I think the Lord's people are beginning to wake up on this lockdown. It's it's going to increase. You know, the lockdown is going to be lifted and then it's going to come back down because, you know, God's going to turn up the turn up the heat and <clears throat> he has to get rid of the, the the chaff that's within the bride and, and pour out the oil well this is how you know you go to church do the man of God to get anointed and things like that well Psalms 133 tells you how the anointing comes right it's not just going to church and having hands laid on you and being being anointed that's the old order and the new order of being anointed is found in Psalms 133. And that has to do, I'm just going to read, uh, start out here. It says, how good, how good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. You know, brothers and sisters, right? When the brethren come together. It's so precious when we come together to, to, to praise the Lord. It is like a precious oil poured out on the head. God anoints Mount Zion, right? And that's how he's going to anoint Zion. When we come together in unity in these end-time kingdom camps, and that's what the Lord calls them, 
kingdom camps, these, these Goshen camps, because they will be kingdom camps uh, for the elect, for both the head and the body. The head represents the man-child company, the male-child company, those who are raised up into heavenly places uh, first. And the purpose of the man-child is to raise up the bride and the, and the heavenly places, right? To be co-joined co together. God will co-join both the, the spiritual head and the spiritual body, and they'll be one. And uh, so as he opens up uh, places of refuge, you know, the land would have to be anointed, right? God has select the places where, where we are to, to be established. And as we come together in the unity of the Spirit, it prepares the place, it prepares a resting place for the Lord to bestow His blessing and to, to bestow His 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 anointing. And, there, and there's, there's no other way. It's not about having hands laid on you, because it says in Hebrews that that time is going to pass away, and uh, you know the Lord's going to raise up a church that's going to be pure and without spot, but not with with uh, without having to go to the fi fire and being purged. And this is the time that we're in now. You know, now what we've tasted so far has been very light. And if you uh, listen to uh, intently, you need to listen to intently to what the Lord showed Chuck Yumbrandt, right? Chuck Yumbrandt. And when an invasion came to America, when the Russian troops came came in and uh, took over the cities that were still left after the nuclear war, that they were, it was evident that the country was under uh, under control of the beast kingdom, there was great uh, suppression of the of the beast government, and when they came in, they were somewhat liber liberated and happy that the Russian troops came in and and liberated them. You know, gave them a sense of freedom, right? And uh, so we are going into that time where the beast kingdom is is going to take take is taking over America and it's not going to get better right but it's going to force us to get on our knees we shouldn't have to be forced to get on our knees you know we should it's a glorious thing to get up in the morning and and come to the Lord there's, there's no better thing you know the Father has made us to worship him and, and spirit and, and truth That's that's the true worshipers, right? So we're transitioning from the church age. You know, the churches are going to be locked down and they're going to be burnt down to the ground like, like in Africa. It's going to happen here in America. That's part of God's judgment. He's going to allow the churches to be given over for correction, right? And the doors will be shut and the churches will be burnt to the ground. Those pastors who already pledged their allegiance to the beast kingdom will voluntarily hand their congregations over to go into captivity into into the FEMA camps, right? And you can't you can't take take this inoculation that they're that they're planning. This is this is not of the Lord. And uh, so we need to come together in the unity of the spirit. And this is our the number one key survival in the days ahead. They're uh, you know, when we come together in these temporary camps, to be temporary first, to be a half step out of the system, outside the cities, and these Goshen camps would become a a gathering point for the righteous, right? A rallying point, and the the banner of love would be lifted up. You know, they'll become a strong tower, and the righteous are going to run into these camps. It's not going to be for the faint of heart. It's not not going to be for for those who haven't paid the price to to come to that place in the Lord. There will be a place where the righteous can run into and, and those that are, you know, who the Lord ordains to come to these places. Because they will be places of or ordination. It's not going to be for everyone. God's not going to allow idols into the camp. He's not going to allow people coming in there and bringing 
you know, it's not that our, our idols are, are external, our idols are internal. And he's not going to allow those who have the love of money in their heart and that they're running for their lives. No, they have to go through their, through their chastening, right? But God's going to bring a, the people together. He's going to bring forth the, the barley harvest. And we're going to come together. And it's going to be such a blessing because these ocean camps, these kingdom camps, will become places of open heavens, right? And as young people come in, to be raised up that uh, in these open heavens you will see that Yeshua himself will come down and teach that the, that the ancient prophets of old will come down and they will teach and the Lord will have uh, shepherds raised up that they will teach the by the revelation of the Lord uh, and bring forth these end time mysteries so in a short order, God's going to raise up this younger generation. What's well, taken 40 years in our lives, that uh, God's going to do a quick work. And it's going to be a few short years. And God's going to raise up this 42nd generation, this last generation, to become the greatest spiritual warriors of our, all time. David Terrell, God's prophet to the world, he saw in America an army of young people, that exceeded, that exceeded 20 million, 20 million young people. And uh, for that to happen, he raised up four, 490,000 spiritual mothers and, and fathers, right? The, the older generation. And uh, it's going to be great because it's not going to be about going to church to church anymore. No, no more church hopping. That's coming to an end. But God's going to have these watering holes, these tables set up in the wilderness for his people as an ensign, as a, as a tower, as a strong tower. And this is where the oil is going to be poured out. And uh, as we come together in, in the unity of the Spirit. I'm going to leave it here. Need to get to town. This is Joshua Ta uh, Taylor. Donald D. E. Taylor coming to you from here in Boston Bar, British Columbia, Canada.